Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Checkpoint's Head of Incident Response, Dan Wiley. Thank you, everybody. When I was five years old, I got a great present. I got a wonderful yellow bicycle. It made my day. It had all the cool little widgets. It had all the cool little gadgets. And I loved this bicycle. I was six years old, living in Germany. And my uh, very hippie parents decided that it was good for me to go to German school. So I went to German school. And I took my yellow bicycle one day. And I loved that bike. I can't tell you how much I loved that bike. I polished it. I cleaned it. And I was so proud of it. And the day I took it to the school, I went into my, uh, my first grade class, and I had a wonderful day, and I came back out, and my bike was gone. It broke my little heart. I was so upset. My, my parents uh, came to the school, and, and they tried to console me, and we couldn't uh, understand what happened to the bicycle. It was the only one that was taken. So, my father said, well, Danny, let's go see if we can find it. So we got in our old Volvo, and we started driving around the neighborhood to see if we could find my yellow bicycle. And guess what? We found it. Someone had thrown it over the fence at the school, and it was laying in a field right next to the school. And we didn't understand why would somebody take my bicycle and throw it over the side of the wall. The next day, we went into school, and Frau Bender, who was exactly what you think she looks like, a, 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 a solid German teacher, sat in front of the school in the class and basically said, who took Danny's bike? We don't believe in bullies in this school. You need to come forward right now and explain why you took that bike. And the funny thing happened. There were two sides of the class, the two or three kids that actually took the bike and threw it over the fence, and everyone else that was rallying against them because it was the wrong thing to do. Ultimately, the three kids that took the bike and threw it over were just being bullies. And this is what we're facing right this second, is bullies. People that are taking advantage of every last one of you. So if you do not have an anger, a fierce anger towards these assholes that are attacking you right this second, there's a problem. They're bullying you every single day, and it's getting worse. Over the last three, four days, our team inside of the Checkpoint Incident Response Team have handled hundreds of customer issues around the ransomware events that we saw uh, over the last few days. And one common theme came out of all of them. Every last one of the customers wanted to know what they could do to defend themselves against these bullies. And this is exactly what we did. We provided them the methods and the procedures to be able to stop these attacks in their tracks. But there were some key components that these customers needed to be able to actually be effective against these attacks. And we're going to talk about those today. The very first thing you need to know is that you need to ask questions around the event. You need to understand how these attacks actually work. You have to ask the fundamental question, why? Why did this attack actually occur? How did it actually uh, technically operate? What kind of elements uh, did it utilize for lateral movement? You need to ask the question why. And once you understand all the technical elements, then you can actually do something about it. What can I do? Where can I put in those protections? How can I enable my environment to not allow these attacks to happen in the first place? One of the things that we teach inside of our incident response team is that you want to tell the entire story of the attack. Who, what, where, when, why. 
and then a take all of those lessons and implore new technical controls and additional technical controls to be able to deal with these attacks. Sometimes we find it's not a technical control that stops these attacks. Sometimes we find that it's an operational control or maybe it's a management control. But the point here is, is that you've done the analysis, you understand all the elements of what the attack looked like and what to do about it. The key thing for everyone in this room is do the introspection and deploy additional controls around it. Now this recent attack used an attack vector that is a little bit different. It used a nation state attack vector to move laterally. This is a new age in cyber warfare where nation state zero days are being used to be able to attack your infrastructure. This is scary, guys, because those capabilities within those tool sets is so advanced and so prolific that it takes an additional level of control and visibility to be able to deal with these threats. If you're running a firewall from 1996, or if you're running AV, you're screwed. Simple as that. You need additional controls to be able to stop these attacks. Now, there's two elements to dealing with attacks. You need to have visibility and control to be able to actually make a difference. And what do I mean by visibility? Visibility gives you the ability to actually see within your environment. If you don't have a network diagram of your network, you can't gain visibility. If your management team isn't working with you on a daily basis around security, you don't have visibility inside of the management. They need to understand how it all operates. Visibility also includes logs. So if you're not logging every single action within your network, you will not be able to regenerate the attack, or you won't be able to analyze it very quickly. This last week, when we were analyzing uh, these uh, crypto attacks, one thing that became very, very apparent is that we couldn't very easily tell the story of who and how the first initial contact of this ransomware was. We still don't know what the initial infection vector was. That should scare all of you to death because I can't stand up here and tell you with 100% certainty that it was a phishing email or that it was an open SMB port or maybe it was a USB stick. But that one patient zero spread so quickly and so wildly that we didn't have the visibility to be able to see that completely in the first moments of the actual attack. Now, as a little more time has gone by, we're putting together the story in a lot more complete detail. But this is really worrisome, is that most organizations that are being targeted don't have the visibility to be able to regenerate the events. One of the things that we do today inside of our endpoint sandblast forensics agent is, is the ability to actually tell that story for you in seconds. That saves time. Visibility and using visibility in its, in its uh, essence will give you the time to actually put in controls. That's the next big component. If you don't have controls throughout your network, you can't stop some of these attacks. Of all the customers that contacted us last week, the ones that suffered the most impact were the ones that had a completely flat network. Now, I know you've heard about micro-segmentation and segmentation and all the other uh, architecture decisions around being able to protect against these kind of events, but this is why we keep saying this, is that a flat network will let these types of attacks run rampant. And that's what happened last weekend. If you have a flat network, SMB transversal takes seconds, and if you infect three or four machines, machines, it is spreading logarithmically within your network within seconds. And that's exactly what we saw. We also saw it spread outward towards the internet. Now, 
how do you stop those kind of events? If you don't have segmentation, if you don't have controls, you can't do anything. For three customers, one of our recommendations to stop this attack were Cisco access lists on switches. That's how bad it was. They had no other controls in their network except for the ability to put a couple of access lists in a couple of core areas to stop the massive propagation of some of these, uh, this ransomware attack. But this is the point. You need to know where all your control points are. You need to understand how to apply those control points around the network. And you need to take those control points and test them and make sure that they're working and that you have a plan to be able to respond when you see these attacks actually occur. Control, it is absolutely vital. With control gives you the ability to respond and actually give you a chance to actually stop these events. Now one of the things that we've been talking about this whole conference are all the cool, great technologies that Checkpoint has to offer. But there's a key component to every last one of those technologies. And that is, you guys have to turn it on. If you don't turn it on, it don't work. <laughs> one of the things that I find is that I talk to customers every single day that says, I bought this great, great, wonderful Sandblast appliance. I've turned it, I turned the, uh, the, 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 the firewall components on. I've got URL filtering turned on. And when we ask them, have you turned on IPS? No. Have you turned on threat emulation? No. Well, guess what, guys? You're not protected yet. We need to turn on all these technologies to be able to get the effect that is required to deal with these threats. So you've got to go push to turn this stuff on. Most of the events that we're dealing with are fairly basic in nature, but just require a couple of controls to be turned on. Now, one of the things that I find is it's hard for you guys to turn it on because you're worried about outages or availability or, or maybe, you know, an issue or a bug. But I'll tell you, something really interesting happened this weekend. We were on a phone call with a major government organization. I mean, big, huge government organization. And we told them, what they needed to do to protect their environment against these threats. And the government agency said, can you turn them on for me right now? And we said, well, what happened to your change control process that takes six weeks and five weeks of testing, and, and, and you've got to get approvals, and you've got to look for windows, and, and you've got to do more regression testing. What are you going to do about all that? And the customer said, damn the torpedoes, full speed ahead turn the shit on right now. And you know what we did? We turned it on right there. The funny thing, though, is the customer was struggling around their network architecture. So we literally had to re-architect their network in the middle of a crisis while we're turning stuff on. Now, we have some amazing engineers, and they all stood up this weekend to help each and every one of you deal with these threats. And we sat with that customer for eight and a half hours to get everything turned on, available and ready for Monday morning, zero outage, zero impact, all protections turned on, customer is protected. That's what it takes, guys, is that you have to be proactive. If you think these bullies are not coming after you, they are, and they're going to continue to come after you day after day after day. You need to take the fight back to them. You see, I'm getting a little riled up. I want you guys to feel it because it's going to get worse. You have to be the defenders. You are the guys on the side of the right. You're the guys that are fighting for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Yay! You're the ones that are helping everyone survive this. So go do it. We're here to help you to do that. Now, with all of that said, we know that the attackers are going to keep coming. We know that they're targeting you specifically. And that's why we have the incident response team here at Checkpoint, is to be your knight in shining armor to help you deal against the dragons that are coming after you. 
we're here for you 24 hours a day, seven days a week, to be able to bring you the knowledge of the attack vectors, the understanding of the threat actors, how to enable your protections, how to make sure that you've got the capabilities to be able to actually respond to these events, to give you a fighting chance against these guys. That's what this team does for you 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. You need to be proactive. We're being proactive. We want to bring those protections to you. We have every protection that you can imagine available within the checkpoint architecture. You just have to work with us and your environments to get them turned on. Without them on, you will not be able to survive these threats. Now, with all of this said, do I, do I think I got a point across that you guys are you're feeling that the only way to defend against these attacks is to be proactive and to evolve your security. Evolution takes many, many different forms, but on a day-to-day -day basis, I encourage each and every one of you to understand the threat actors and be able to evolve your controls to meet the, the attacks that are facing you uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. And the way you do that is, is interface with your checkpoint representatives. Work with your SEs, work with your sales teams, work with the engineers, come to these conferences to learn how we can protect against these threats with you, for you, and by you to ensure that you can actually deal with these threats. Evolve it on a day-to-day -day basis. Look for those opportunities to turn on technologies. For example, our threat extraction software is absolutely amazing on being able to deal with zero-day threats. We're actually working with governments around the world to actually utilize this software in a much more proactive way to be able to deal with the threats in real time. Threat extraction of all of our technologies is a game changer today. I encourage each and every one of you to go and look at that technology. Because instead of just analyzing all day long, you're actually preventing. And this is vital. The one thing we saw with the last event this weekend was that people were spending so much time analyzing the malware and not spending a lot of time around putting in those protections. And what we're encouraging you is to look for opportunities to block early, quickly, automated. And that will give you a fighting chance. But the key thing there is evolution. Evolve your architecture. Don't stuck, stick with the current architecture the way you have it today. Keep pushing it. Keep pushing it. Every single day, I get an update on an app inside of the iOS world, or there's a new operating system, and we all just install it immediately. Why don't we do the same thing with our security controls? Bring them to the modern age so you actually do have a fighting chance to be able to deal with these attacks. This is the key message. Analyze, understand, have a plan, make sure you have the visibility and control, and make sure you evolve your architecture to be able to defend against these threats. And when you do need assistance, contact us 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, and we as the Checkpoint family will be there to help you. Partners, SEs, sales, the teams, or the engineering teams will all be there to help you. You are not alone in these fights. Come and ask questions. Work with our teams, have a fighting chance, and let's stand up to these bullies together. Don't let them take over your networks in their quest to, to make money or defraud you or whatever. Stand up to bullies. That's my comment for the day. And if you need help doing it, we're right there with you. Just like in Frau Bender's class, half the class or three quarters of the class was there behind me saying, bullies are bad, let's stop those bullies. With that, thank you very much. Look forward to talking to each of you. Oh,